Oh, uh, I can see why you like doing this. This is pretty fun. Yeah. Jack Waldron, Executive Vice President at Five Rings Financial. Is that true? <laughs> it is, okay. as far as <laughs> as far as I know Good. currently. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody, uh, to another edition of the Alliance Group Podcast. We have a really awesome episode today uh, with Jack Waldron. He's an Executive Vice President at Five Rings Financial. And I'm really stoked for this episode because we are going to be getting into uh, what I have. It's the hottest topic going on right now in financial services uh, infinite banking. Jack Waldron, you have been working with the infinite banking concept for several years now. Yeah. Uh, and business has, has really been been picking up lately. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me, Sam. It's uh, it's really my pleasure and love hanging out. And, yeah. You know, if we can, uh, you know, work in some things to write off while we're out here having fun, then let's do it. You <laughs> Absolutely. <know? laughs> I'm, I'm always I'm always down for that. We could, yeah. all, we could all use another write off. So we're, we're talking about infinite banking and you and I were kind of talking before the podcast. This is such a hot topic right now. I mean, right. it is literally one of the most searched uh, subjects on on YouTube and on Google. Why do you think that infinite banking is such a hot topic right now at this moment in time that we're in right now? Yeah, I, well, people are starting to hear about this thing called inflation. I don't know if you've heard about it yeah, recently. It's kind of uh, becoming a problem. I've seen a couple of headlines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, you know, inflation is kind of pointing and laughing at our cash currently, making it feel bad about itself, right. you know, while it's <laughs> gathering dust out there. Um, you know, when you look at like national savings rates uh, today are like we're earning 0.1% uh, right. you know, in, in savings accounts. But you, when you look at inflation being around 8 or 9%, right. Americans are, uh, they're not ignoring that anymore, you know, and they're getting sick of it, in fact. Uh, and especially people that are working hard and putting away more money. Uh, and they want that money to do more for them, right? You know, uh, certainly banks are, you know, and so they want to be able to take advantage of that. And so, uh, people are researching it, people are talking about it, and yeah. So, infinite banking is something that's really gotten it's uh, just this, hot over the last few years. It's this buzzword uh, yeah. that's going around. And so, what we're going to try to do on this podcast is, is we're going to try to shed a little bit more light. What is infinite banking? You also hear it be called uh, be your own bank or bank on yourself. There's all kinds of terms BYOB, out there. Be your own bank. BYOB, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what exactly is infinite banking all about? I'm going to challenge you to try to uh, kind of explain what this concept is okay. uh, in, in a in a in a podcast format. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> all right. Well. You know, uh, essentially what you're able to do is take excess money. So what you're not wanting to do is take money that you need for like your, uh, your essential expenses, your, pay bills, your bills, right? right. Rent, mortgage, this isn't insurance. Checking account money. Yeah. This is, you know, there's this a savings. We're not, money. we're not anti-bank here. We're not telling people, you know, you can't have any money in the bank. Right. But what about that excess money, right? You know, that you're wanting to maybe do something with. Well, yep. Uh, so what infinite banking essentially does is allows people to put money in something that's safe, that is insured. Okay. So that's the reason why we usually go to banks is because we've been told our whole lives it's, it's safe. You know, we're not going to lose that money. So the, the same concept exists here. You know, we've been told our whole lives, we got to take our money and go to banks that are insured. What we're doing though, is we're just bypassing banks, right? See, banks are, have to be insured because they basically have no money in reserves. They loan out all their money. Right. And so they have to be insured. So what we're doing is just going around banks and going directly to the industry that has all the money, which is the insurance companies, you know, and uh, the insurance industry is something that most of us have grown up in all areas of America, knowing that they have a lot of money. Right. right? Yes. Um, but what most people didn't know is just like there's insurance companies that insure, you know, homes and cars and boats, um, you know, and cell phones, there's also insurance companies that insure money. And you get some distinct advantages uh, utilizing these types of uh, strategies. And not only are you guaranteed and insured against uh, risk, right, but you also get market-like returns without that market-like risk. Um, you know, this is something that when you look over the last 10 years, clients have averaged returns of about 9% in some strategies. Uh -huh. Long-term returns, uh, just to be a little bit more conservatively, if you're talking about like a 20-year-plus uh, period of time, you're probably looking at about more like 7-8%. Gotcha. Uh, just to be a little bit more conservative. But, you know, the other advantages that you're getting are some tax advantages, right? You know, so obviously people with a little bit higher level of uh, income, uh, asset level are really interested in in that uh, when you consider, you know, tax rates being what they are and going up potentially. So you, um, uh, you have to fund it with after tax money. So this has to be money that you've made uh, somehow paid taxes on it. Now, if you're self-employed, 
business owner, investor, you might've made that money in some sort of a tax advantaged way. Uh But now that you've uh, put it into this strategy, you don't have to pay taxes on your gains. You don't have to pay taxes on your access. And you also don't have to pay taxes someday if something happens to you. All right. Right. So uh, your family, your beneficiaries or whoever can inherit that money without having to pay taxes. Uh, Some of the other reasons why people like it is that uh, you have control over it. So like public options like IRA, 401k are awesome uh, in certain situations. But if you're looking to diversify, you know, it might be because you would like to be able to have a little bit more control. Yeah. Uh, You know, a lot of people are not liking the returns on their 401ks and, and, uh, and, you know, right uh, now, like that right (laughs) now, a lot of people have uh, seen their 401k become a 301k. You know what I mean? (laughs) Absolutely. And that actually might be another driving factor. You know, you talk about inflation. I think the other reason that people are reaching about it, about infinite banking right now is because they don't want to put their money in this crazy market and they're looking for something yeah. Something else, right? Yeah. People want something that's like safe, but also gives them uh, a better return than 0.1%, right? You Absolutely. know, when inflation is about 9% more than what we're getting in our savings accounts. So, right, right. So yeah, um, when they when they start looking at different things that they want to do, you know, obviously there's IRAs, obviously there's 401ks and uh, public options. Mm-hmm. The problem is you're, there's the rules are kind of set in place to where... Uh, if you break the rules, you have to pay penalty, maybe even tax, you could lose half your money. Right. So if we look into these more private options, you actually get to set the parameters. So uh, we have clients that have put in, you know, $10,000 uh, a year into that strategy. We have people that have done $10,000 a day into that strategy, right? Wow. Um, you hear a lot about Roth IRA and 401k being pretty popular for its tax advantages, but then when you actually find out how much money you can put into it and being potentially not even qualified to even do it, it can right. be discouraging. Um, so we have people that, you know, make a regular income um, that set their terms of how much money they put into it. And then uh, we also have people that are very wealthy that have put large amounts of money into Real that same exact strategy and they're, like they're taking advantage of it equally. Um, the other thing is liquidity, right? You know, so if you put money into a traditional uh, public option, you cannot touch that money until you're 59 and a half without paying a penalty and potentially taxes on top of that where you could lose a lot. Right. Uh, inside of these infinite banking strategies, thus the term infant bank is you're able to use it an infinite amount of times whenever you want to. So uh, it could be for personal, could be for professional. You don't have to explain it. It is a private arrangement. And so uh, like I remember the last time I went to the bank and had to send a wire, you know, they asked for a reason, you know, even just at my local bank, like, what are you wiring this money for? And I'm kind of going like, but what do you care? Your business. <laughs> right. Right. Just send the money. So I'm like, I just made up an answer. Cause I was like, I wonder if they're going to actually <laughs> right. question me about this. All right. You know, and, um, but, so to, it's, it's, to fund my international drug ring. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Get you, a knock on the door. <laughs> Hello, I am uh, the FBI. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, people like the fact that it's private, they have control over it, and they have access to their money, the right. liquidity aspect, right? You know, and that's why a lot of people have been stuck kind of leaving their money in a traditional savings account is because at least they have access to it if they need it, right? Uh, especially, again, people that are wanting to utilize that money for, for investments. Um, so you, not only do you have that ability to have access to it, but you also have the ability to create leverage and right, right. You know, th- this whole leverage idea. Absolutely. So leverage or arbitrage as some people would call it. I like calling it leverage, but right. you know, um, arbitrage we, a, l- a little more fancy, just, <laughs> a little more fancy. Right. Yeah. It all kind of means the same thing. But again, these are the terms that, that, that people, you know, hear about and they know like, okay, so wealthy people use leverage and they, and they, and right. they take advantage of arbitrage. I don't know what the, what that means. And I, I, I assume that I just can't have access to, to, to fancy terms like that. <laughs> um, right. But th- this is actually something that this is kind of what makes infinite banking work is the idea of, of leveraging your right. own money and earning arbitrage, right? Exactly. So uh, people are becoming more financially aware over the last few years. I think people have been forced to be at home and, and maybe like uh, listen to podcasts and books, at, you like know, read one. books or whatever. And <laughs> and uh, so people are, are becoming more financially aware. And as they become more aware, they also can become more confused right. uh, because there's just so much that's out there. And the financial industry does a pretty good job of sounding really impressive, but also being confusing at the same time. So And what, sounds like it's, it's almost strategic that they do that, right? <laughs> I believe you know, it's it is. like you're you yeah. I'm going to use these terms that confuse you so that you have to pay me a fee so that I can explain it to yeah. you, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, the company that, that I'm a part of our brokerage is called Five Rings Financial. And, and really what we're known for is trying to take this complex financial world and boil it down to some basics, no matter what we do. So when it comes to uh, infinite banking, you know, uh, one of the things that we want people to understand is it's not all that different of a concept when it comes to the leverage of things like a home equity line of credit, right? right. If you own a house and 
it has a certain amount of equity, right? So it could be uh, you've bought a house when it was worth 200000 Well, you know, inflation and all this stuff has now brought it to the point where it's worth 400000 It's appreciated quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And you've paid it down. So you might have $300,000 of equity in that house. Well, you can let that money sit there in that house, and that's great, but it's only just going to be there in that house, just like leaving money in savings. Right. If you get a home equity line of credit, that is essentially getting a loan against the value of that house. And now you can still make money on the appreciating value of that house, but you also can use that money, hopefully for something smart. Right. <laughs> and uh, and make money for you in two places at the same time. Exactly. And that's where you, you hear terms like, you've heard people say it's, it's always hardest to make their first million, right? Uh, and it's easier to make millions after that. And uh, the reason is because in the beginning, it's hard to make a million dollars. Out, out of thin air. Exactly. You have to make it out of thin air, basically. You have to do it with, with sweat and with yeah. hard work and, and to build your wealth. Yeah. Well, it's it's built with sweat equity. Right. But once you actually have equity, if you're smart, you start to use that equity to leverage into growing the next million. And so, again, you can do that with a house. You can do it with business. And what wealthy people also do is is use it for cash, right? And, and success leaves clues. And right. if you look at um, you know how wealthy people created their wealth – they basically work hard to accumulate something and then work really hard to use that something to help them grow some things on uh, in addition to that. You know? right, and so, exactly. uh, so again, just like a home equity line of credit allows you to borrow against the value of your equity in a house, you can also do the same thing with your cash using uh, this giant insurance industry. But you also get some distinct advantages. If you do a home equity line of credit, those loans are typically based off of the federal interest rates and mm-hmm. interest rates are, are pretty high, right? right, right. Um, I have a home equity line of credit and I believe it's sitting at around like seven or 8% if I, if I use that. Right. Um, infinite banking loans um, are guaranteed to not be higher than 6% with many companies that do it. Wow. Uh, the average that I've seen over the last 13, 14 years has been more like three to 4%. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it's, really sought after for that fact that you can borrow money cheaper than just about anywhere else. But at the same time, you're still making eight, 9% exactly. on that money. So you're making a net return. Yep. You know? yep. So it's uh, it's very attractive for that when you understand that on top of all the benefits we've just talked about. Yeah. So, so who, who, who knows about this, uh, this, uh, this kind of concept, right? I mean, obviously more people are Googling it. They want to know more about it. Who has traditionally been using the concept of infinite banking, you know, in, right. in the past. Well, what, so what, when you when you look at people? statistics, right, <laughs> and you look, you just kind of do a little bit of research on this. I thought this was really interesting to find out. Um, okay, because effectively, what you're doing, right, uh, is you're taking money, parking it within an insurance company, mm-hmm. right, um, and they're they're holding on to it, and and they're investing it in their means, and you're getting a deal. They're they're making a net return uh, with what they can invest that money in. So they've got billions of dollars, right? Sure. So let's say they're making 10% long-term. You as the client are making about 8%. So they're making a 2% profit. Right. If they have, say, $50 billion, like many of these companies do or more, and they're earning 2%, 2% on $50 billion is like a lot of a money. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they can do that for a long time. So you start to look at, okay, so who actually has money parked with these companies? Well, if you look at the top 1% of the wealthiest people in our country today, they own about one third of the reserves inside of insurance companies. One third. Wow. So that's just 1% of the country. If you actually look at the top 10%, they own about 60% of the reserve inside of insurance companies. See, most people think about like buying insurance. Uh, wealthy people think about owning insurance. Right. And, yeah. Uh, it's just a whole different mentality. It's something I grew up in a little podunk town uh, in, uh, in the country. Uh-huh. And uh, my family, nobody I grew up with understood anything to do with that. And it wasn't until I started surrounding myself with people that were really smart financially that you start seeing these things. And that's why I say a lot success leaves clues. And you got to pay attention to what people are doing. And so what you're basically saying is success leaves clues. So what are the wealthy doing? And if I'm a person who wants to grow wealth and be wealthy, I should probably be paying attention right. to those things that they're doing and that they did in order to get wealthy. Right, right. right. And it's not just individuals. Uh, you know, you think about what are we all typically doing as, as most Americans? We take our money and we put it in the bank. Then you start to look at, well, what are the banks doing with that money? Well, of course, they're obviously loaning money out. But you know what they also do? They park money inside insurance companies. <laughs> and uh, if you have, like, currently in America, there's uh, over 3,800 banks that have over $190 billion inside the reserves of insurance companies. Wow. Uh, and 
you, you know what they're doing with that is then just loaning it back to you yep. <laughs> and uh, and you know thanking you for letting you uh, for letting you or you, you letting them hold on to their money exactly um, or your money for point one percent. Meanwhile, they're they're taking advantage of all these advantages we just talked about. So one hundred ninety um, billion dollars owned by banks and life insurance. Right. They call it bully. Right. Right. Yeah. Bank owned life insurance. That's right. Exactly. Right. So that kind of leads into the next question that we uh, usually give is like so how right like right. Uh, how is that? How's that how? Yeah. how are they doing this? <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, you remember the uh, the movie um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yes. I okay. love that movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. So I uh, remember Charlie had to have that golden ticket to get in the amazing experience. The golden ticket. He found it in a, in a Willy Wonka chocolate bar. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I would say this account that we just talked about, for most people that weren't aware of it, uh, is, is quite the amazing experience, especially when it comes to your money. Maybe not as exciting as all that chocolate, but right. I mean, it's it's still pretty tasty <laughs> financial right. stuff, you know. And um, to, the the catch is, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, is, exactly. It's like, it's like, so why isn't everyone doing this? Right. Well, you have to have There's, a golden ticket. To be able to have that, you have to have a golden ticket, also known as a golden policy. So uh, based on, you know, the laws and rules inside of our country, tax code 7702 states that as long as you are a policy holder of XYZ insurance company, so you actually have to have a policy, right. have to be a customer, then you can overfund and basically overpay for what that insurance costs and allow all your money to sit in this amazing savings account. Um, and so what they do is they use life insurance for that. Why? Well, it happens to be about the cheapest insurance that you can get, but it also protects your life. Let's say you get sick or you get injured and you mm -hmm. pass away or, or whatever. Well, if you have parked all this money and then taken loans against that money, well, you know, they can take, they can recoup uh, the money that was owed to them from the, the life insurance. So right. it protects the insurance it basically, company. Basically secures it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, before Sam, before you freak out about, <laughs> right. like, uh, you know, insurance. Right. Um, you yeah, have so to I look was, at I was about to freak out about the life insurance <laughs> part of it. I know you know about that. I know you know this, but, you know, uh, I was raised certainly in this country to think of insurance as the boogeyman. Yeah, people, right? people hear the word life insurance and they immediately want to run screaming the other way. Yeah, and we don't like car insurance or home insurance uh, either. And it's, uh, you know, because we just were taught it's not a good deal for us or whatever. We're being ripped off. And, um, you know, Luckily, life insurance is cheaper than almost all insurances you could consider. Um, and the way these things are structured is to mitigate and minimize what, how much uh, you're spending on this insurance. Right. And those, uh, the cost that you have, the small cost that you have for that insurance is far outweighed by the benefits that you're getting. Again, let's look at the alternative. We right. can always just continue to leave our money sitting in a traditional strategy savings bank account, right? Get get, you know, gathering dust, going nowhere and losing to inflation. Right. Um, or we can start beating inflation, getting all these advantages. And if that's the golden ticket, right, uh, what a lot of people are, are learning is it's really not that bad. So, um, you know, we can talk about that later. I can give right. you some examples of kind of what that looks like. So you can kind of. Um, well, I think that and you, some you, well, you've actually set up several of, of these, um, you know, of these infinite banking uh, kind of structures with with many clients. What's yeah. what is your uh, experience as far as when they when they realize that, OK, so what is the catch? OK, the catch is that technically to do this strategy, you have to own a life insurance policy. <clears throat> Yeah. Once they get to that point, they're like, well, I need life insurance anyway, number one, or maybe it's, I already have life insurance. I'll just make sure that it's with this company instead of whatever company I might've had it with. I mean, once they get to that point, they don't really buck uh, yeah. about that. Right. Yeah. Uh, the life insurance is probably cheaper than what they pay for their cell phone insurance. Exactly. So, I mean, when you, when you start looking <laughs> at it, it's like, okay, so if that, there are no other fees associated with this, there's literally just the cost and expenses related to that insurance. Right. And it's less than what you pay for home insurance and certainly health insurance. You know? Right. So, um, so the, one of the things that we do talk about, you know, so our company is a brokerage, meaning we get to represent uh, every single company that's competitive in this space. Well, the most competitive companies in this area, when you do get the insurance, um, there is uh, different options that you have. Almost 100% of my clients choose what is called living benefit life insurance, which I, I know you're aware of, but I love for those that are listening insurance. and don't know, right. um, living benefits is a life insurance you don't have to die to use. Now, again, it's an afterthought. People use this as a financial tool, right? They just need to get, get the golden ticket. Yeah, and uh, insurance is never going to be the most exciting part of any of these things. However, the way it works is let's say you had a million dollars, like if, if, what came with your infinite bank account, 
is you get paired with a million dollar life insurance policy with living benefits, right? right? Let's say that's the minimum that you have to have. Right. And then all of a sudden you get diagnosed with a critical illness like cancer or you have a heart attack or stroke or you have a critical injury. Mm-hmm. The company, the insurance company, will give you the option of paying out up to 75% of that death benefit right then. So you may have only put in $100,000 at that point. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to hand you a check for $750,000. Now, for anybody that's listening or or watching, um, if you're, let's say, married, have kids, have a business, you have an income, if you're not already financially independent, you should look into living benefits. I mean, that's important for anybody to have because you have, most likely, you have health insurance. And health insurance is important to have. However, it pays you nothing. If you get sick or injured and can't work, Mm -hmm. you know what? Um, the health insurance company is going to pay out a lot of money, but it's not going to come to you. It's going to go to the doctors, the hospitals, surgeons, exactly. facilities, yep. all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, your bills are piling up. So what Living Benefits has done for a lot of our clients is, unfortunately, when these things happen, I mean, life happens, uh, nobody sees it coming. But when we've had people that were really sick or really injured, it's kind of nice to know that they have access to this large amount of money that prevents them from losing everything. Absolutely, um, Illnesses and injuries are the leading cause of bankruptcy the leading cause of foreclosure, the leading cause of business owners selling their business prematurely and being out of business and maybe losing everything. Yep. So um, this could be, you know, not the most exciting part of, of your infinite bank strategy, mm-hmm. but it may be the most essential if you actually end right. up needing it. So at least you're not throwing money out the window. That's probably something that most people need anyway, is my point. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a huge believer in living benefits. I think that anyone, whether they're interested in an infinite banking scenario or not, I've, I'm a huge believer that every family needs living benefits. So if if that is, I, I think your point being, if that's the the catch of infinite banking is you <laughs> yeah. you have to have this living benefits life insurance policy that might, you know, really pay off <laughs> one day if something right. happens, that's not the worst thing in the world. Right. Right. Well, and when you, again, what you have to do is you have to look out for yourself. And then, you know, what really speaks more than just the words here is when you look at examples, you look at scenarios and you have to look at, okay, well, if I continue to leave my money sitting in the bank, um, Let's just say you were uh, to, you know, you had saved up an excess of amount of hundred thousand dollars, right? Right. If you have a hundred thousand dollars saved up and you set set it in the bank for the next twenty years, in twenty years you'd have a hundred thousand and three dollars, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Right. So it's like, okay, well, could this be better than that? Yeah, it, it could be phenomenally better. Way, than way, that way better. And yeah. still give you that safety, that peace of mind, knowing that my money is safe, it's insured, and all that kind of stuff. So effectively, what we're talking about is people that have excess money, they're depositing it. Uh, the first thing they're doing is taking care of the uh, the small expenses for the golden ticket. Right. And then all of that excess, the large majority of their money is being dropped into savings. And while it's sitting in that, that saving strategy, um, they have the option of choosing different crediting options. And right. so, um, like I said, long term, what we typically see is uh, around seven to eight percent. But in times where, you know, you can use indexes and indices mm-hmm. related to the market where you're not exposed to market risk, but you do get market upside. And, right. you know, after 2008, uh, we had clients that were averaging around 10 percent, uh, you know, annualized returns, which is awesome. Yeah. But Especially would, when you when you take into account that there's a zero percent floor, you, you, if the market goes yeah. down, you yeah. can't lose no risk. money. Yeah, That's, no, yeah. So in those index type strategies, you cannot lose money, which is nice, and people like that. Uh, but then there's also you know uh, old school tried and true methods where you can just instead of going with that floor type strategy and with upside. Uh, some people will, might opt for more of like a uh, a lower fixed rate, something that's just steady, eddy, right. easy as it goes. But yeah. less and less people are wanting to do that because with inflation rates being higher, they're wanting to get better returns. So absolutely, yeah, yep. So but, so you're essentially what you're describing is uh, this is a cash value permanent life insurance policy. That is where the money is getting deposited into, and that is where you start growing this kind of cash value snowball yeah. over time using these the, yeah, these strategies. You're just manipulating the heck out of that policy. So yeah. what, what you're doing is you're taking some form of a permanent life insurance policy and then making it so that 99.9% of it is a financial tool. Right. And um, what I'm looking at, actually, I've got a computer here in front of me and I was uh, wanted to bring some examples uh, for you. Uh, sure. Just, clients that we've worked with. Uh, yeah, I, so I, our, that's actually, that was my, my next question. Okay. You are actually setting these up for clients. Yeah. What are they doing with their infinite banking? Um, and, 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 and how is it, how's it working out for them? So I'm going to, uh, 
give you an example of a client. This, this is Please. somebody that's yeah. a real estate investor. So real estate investors um, have really taken to this because these are people that, of course, they're putting away a lot of money for, uh, you know, for excess. They need to have liquid money. And right? they need it to either buy and hold properties, mm -hmm. you know, well, uh, uh, you know, procure properties, fix them up, put a renter in there, finance it and move on. But they yep. need that money to get that, that property and fix it up and stuff. Yep. Or maybe they do uh, flipping, maybe it's residential, commercial, whatever. But obviously people have gotten a lot into real estate investing, you know, over the last handful of years. Sure. And even before that, there's a lot of people that have been into it and they've utilized these strategies because of all of the advantages we've talked about already. It's basically the savings account on steroids with all of these, you know, awesome returns, advantages, uh, and leveraging. Yep. So, uh, this is an example of a client who's 46 years old. And this is a guy that he, uh, routinely would have an extra hundred thousand dollars, right? So he's got his, his main career, mm -hmm. uh, that pays the bills, but also he aggressively puts away extra money and he invests and buys, uh, buys properties and, and makes income there as well on top of that. So he would routinely have over a hundred thousand dollars of excess money each year. So what we do, uh, when we structure these is to compress schedules, right? So if you look at like a traditional uh, life insurance policy, which is not like the most amazing savings strategy uh, in the world in terms of like making a whole lot of money in a very short period of time, right? what you're doing is just compressing it. And so legally, the minimum amount of time that you can fully fund one of these uh, policies is it has, to, it can be funded in about five years. Mm -hmm. um, and if you fund it with, if you, you basically pick a target, you know, so for, for this guy, uh, what we needed to do is, was figure out a target. So if he's, if he's routinely making an extra hundred thousand dollars a year, we looked at 500,000, right. hundred thousand a year, five years. thousand a year for five right. years. Got it. So if he fully funds that in five years, it's going to be great. Now, if it takes him 10 years to put in that $500,000, it's still going to be great. Right. Hmm. But what I'm about to show you is the example of what happened for him putting that money in over five years. So he actually stuck with that a hundred thousand a year, every single year for five years. After five years, he'd put in $500,000. Right. After five years, he had uh, $550,000 in his account. And he also had $1.5 million of life insurance with living benefits. So the, the expenses obviously weren't that bad right. when you consider that he's already got quite a bit more than he put into it. Yep. And again, if he took that same 500000 over the same five years, put it in a traditional savings account, he would have $500,005, yes, right? Yes, exactly, but right. Instead, <laughs> you know, instead he's, he's actually been utilizing that money all this time, uh, taking loans against that at a really good rate, mm -hmm. using that money to go out and get more properties and make more money. But he's not just doing it for five years. If, if you have that infinite mentality like a lot of long-term investors have, you know, by the time he's 50, this account is fully funded. Right. Okay. So if he wants to continue to do this account, if anybody wants to do more of these accounts, you just have to, or do more of it, you have to do more accounts. Okay. Right. But as in regards to this one account, it's, it's essentially fully funded and now it's just off and running. Okay. And it's just a, you know, fully funded saving strategy. That's just going to so throw again, and accumulate. So, so if, if I can understand this, he, he put in a hundred thousand dollars for five years. He's mm -hmm. now he's got 525 ish, five fifty. Five fifty. Yeah. sorry, uh, $550,000 in cash value that is accumulated within this permanent life insurance policy. Correct. And what he then can do is take that $550,000 and loan any portion of that to himself, essentially. Yeah. Right? So, but the key there is that the money is not actually coming out of his account. It stays in his account. Correct. And continues to earn interest, which I think is where the magic of infinite banking Absolutely. comes. He is, he's still earning money uh, on that money, but then he's also got money he's loaned out using that as collateral, and he's utilizing that money that he's loaned himself to make additional investments and earn himself money in a right. completely different way on top of the money that he's still earning on his capital that's inside the account. Great point. And, and uh, it, it's it's worth really understanding that part because that's why over and above the fact that you've got safety, good return, tax advantages, the leveraging component. If you have $500,000 and you make 10%, right? That's $50,000, right? Right. Well, if you're also using that 500,000, if you have a loan against that 500,000, you use the entire amount, right? Right. And let's just say the loan cost was 5%. Well, that means you're making, you're earning double, 100% right. more than yeah. what that loan cost you. The loan cost you 5%, you're making 10%. There you go. 100% more, you know? So now your account value is up to 550, 
right? So you've gained that 10%. Right. You can, and you have different options. You can use uh, that 50000 to cover the $25,000 on the loan, right? right? So uh, or you can pay, cover and it manually. The other and you actually never have to pay. For the rest of your life, you can just leave that loan outstanding and the the long-term returns will outweigh what you owe in that loan. So you actually never have to pay the loan back. You'd never have to make payments either. So wow. you have that option. You just control it how you want to. Now, of course you can't borrow more than what you have. It, mm-hmm. It's, you know, um, which, uh, the, the, well, so, the, the magic of this is that you, uh, this is a life insurance policy. We remember, Oh, this is a life insurance <laughs> policy. That I technically have this in. So the company is fine with you not having to pay that loan back because it is secured by the life insurance part of this in that, yep. When you die, when you've had a wonderful, happy life of, of infinite banking and you die at a ripe old age of 95, the the policy's death benefit is going to pay back whatever outstanding loans Correct. that there were. And there'll be plenty right. to do that. And then it'll actually still pay out money to your to your beneficiaries because right. there'll be money left over at that right. point. Right. That so, is, I think, the magic of this infinite banking you know, scenario. So for this guy, for Jeff, okay, so we're, you know, we we're past the point where he's fully funded. He's been using this, this, this account uh, many times and mm-hmm. thus the, the term infinite, right? right? Infinite. Yes. You can use as much as you want. Um, but let's fast forward a little bit, right? He started this account when he was 46. And, you know, we look at average retirement age being in America today. People may not want to retire, but they want to maybe slow down, relax a little bit, not do maybe what he has been doing um, in his career. Right. If, when we run a projection, Okay, we want to be conservative. So I'd rather like under promise and, and over deliver. Totally. Every so time. when we run these projections, we're not even looking at earning 6%. But if he makes 5.8%, okay, over the next uh, 20 years, by the time he's 70, he'll have $1.6 million in that account. He put 500000 in mm-hmm. and he ends up pulling out one point six, or he has access of $1.6 million and he can actually shift it into a, uh, a tax free retirement income at that point. You have that option of, pulling it all out, or you can you actually set Turn it up it to be a, an kind of like income. an annuity. You can yeah. actually set it up as a guaranteed income uh, and it's tax free for the rest of your life. So, and this is another reason why it's a life insurance policy for people like, why does it have to be life insurance? Well, you know, that that's yet another reason in addition to the death benefit life. you've got. Yeah. So it's, it's the, these tax advantages uh, that, that come with, with the cash value. So that is why they, that is why when people are saying, well, if you're gonna do this infinite banking, why are we using life insurance? It's because of, of tax codes and it's, it's, it's taking advantage. Yeah, you may not keep your car insurance the same way. Exactly. You know I mean? Like yeah, your car uh, life is probably not going to be as long as your life. Exactly. <laughs> and right. it costs a lot more than the life insurance. So, exactly. you know, again, when you look at this, um, it, you just step back. Remember, this is a guy, Jeff, who's put in 500,000 over five years. He ends up utilizing that money, getting all the tax advantages. The, this is only icing on the cake. you got to realize for a real estate investor, he's only been utilizing that that amount of money to accumulate millions of dollars of real estate, yep. uh, both residentially and commercially. So he, he does uh, individual properties, apartment buildings, and storage facilities. He mm-hmm. does a whole bunch of different things. But he's utilized this money to increase his buying power and these other things. Right. So this is just icing on the cake, but it's really tasty. Yeah. You know, it's really <laughs> Absolutely. <good. laughs> yeah. You know, apple flavored. You like them apples? <laughs> exactly. You like apples? Hey, oh, right. I screw that. Right. But anyway, like so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so at age 70, you know, when he, when he's got this $1.6 million and you factor in that again, he, he put 500,000, let's look at that. Let's just go back. Okay. We're going to do this for the next 20, 30 years of our life. Do we just want to keep putting money in the same strategies where our money is going nowhere? And what I also want to do too is I don't want to discourage people because somebody might hear that and say, "Yeah, but I don't have a hundred thousand. I'm not a real dollars. estate investor." That was actually my next okay. question to okay. you: is is who? We've used the example of a real estate investor. Yeah. What other types of clients are doing this? Well, anybody. I, I started my first account uh, almost 14 years ago with $600. Huh. You know, uh, and so I may not have understood all the intricacies uh, back then. <laughs> I've been in the industry for 17 years, but you know, and I this was a um, this certainly has existed for a long time. But at that time, I just knew I needed to save money, and I knew there were some other advantages. But at that point, I could afford uh, to save $600. Right. So. Right. Um, so. When, um, uh, when, when I overfunded that account, so it took my wife and I six and a half years to overfund that account. Then we've done a second, third, and we're now working on our fourth account. 
the worst thing you can do is nothing. And that's what I, right. I really want to impress upon people. That's why we teach classes and do workshops and uh, as many as we can all over the country. We're known for our Money 101, the Wine and Wealth yep. classes that we do. Um, this is just another layer of things that if people become savvier financially, that they can learn how to take advantage of. But you got to start somewhere. So, yeah, you don't have to have a certain level of income or asset level. Certainly, this is designed sure. to be great for people with higher levels of income, assets, right. and they want more tax advantages, right? right? Business owners, entrepreneurs, real estate investors, huge for them. And we have people that have literally put six and seven figures uh, into these accounts. But you can start it with 600 bucks. You can start it with $200. Right. You know, uh, we've had many clients that, you know, once they've committed, you have to have this mental commitment of I'm going to make a smart decision. I'm going to put money away, mm -hmm. not just spend it all, right? Creating a budget, creating savings. And, you know, if you look at statistics in America today, like you probably don't <laughs> want to uh, just count on Social Security being there for you, yep, right? I mean, yep, we all know current that. Social yep. Security, uh, by the time you retire, is, is below the poverty line. So, yep. Uh, so people think, okay, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I won't spend all my money. I'll, I'll save some money. And then they learn, okay, well, I shouldn't put my money in the bank. Well, how much money should I be saving? Well, if you want to be pretty aggressive, it's more like 20% of your income. Right. And what, again, when you pay attention to what wealthy people have done and that, you know, success leaves clues, these are people, the top 10% in America today, average saving one third of their income. They pay themselves first before they pay their bills. Mm -hmm. And it's a complete opposite mentality that yep. all of us were raised, which was just don't spend all your money and put the rest of it in a savings account, right, right, right? right? This is the opposite. These people invest money first. They save their money first mm -hmm. in, a, in a smart strategy, mm -hmm. right? Safe and smart strategy. And then they align their life on the rest. And right. you can live at any level you want to on the rest. Right. But no matter what, you've always had, you know, you have money saved. So the future, right. if you're, if you're saving one percent or negative one percent, you know, yeah. uh, we might need to help you kind of start building those habits, that mentality that it takes to really become an, a, an aggressive at. saver. But once you get to that point where, you know, you're ready to start doing the, you know, 10, 20, 30% and you really want to start seeing your money, do some stuff for you, then, um, you know, obviously you can take advantage of this. this yeah. Type of so actually speaking of which, so if someone's watching and they, they have more questions on infinite banking or if they're wondering if this is something for them, yeah. how can they get in, in touch with you? Give me a call. You know, so, uh, we, uh, constantly, I mean, with, uh, uh, with technology, I'm licensed in, um, almost 40 states now. And oh, wow. so I am talking to people all over the country all, the country, all the time. Yeah. And, uh, just was recently talking to somebody in Alaska. Um, oh, wow. So I am licensed in Alaska. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I, so I, I got to go visit them in the summer. You know, <laughs> yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but, make, sure, make, make sure it's the summertime. But yeah, you can, uh, you, uh, we can, I guess, put it in the description or we can put on the screen or whatever yeah, well, we, uh, phone number. You can call my office. You can email me. Uh, we can set up a, a Calendly link so you can literally just book time uh, in, the, in the calendar and we're happy to talk with you about that. And we never charge anything for our time. You know, oh, I mean, we, we do get compensated by the companies that we represent. They pay us basically out of their, uh, their marketing budget to help them find more clients. Right. Uh, but that allows us to not charge our clients anything for our time. And so we're happy to give it. And, you know, we'd have classes and workshops and things that I encourage, especially newer investors to, to go through that so they can start to learn more. And sure, we yeah. want people yeah. to be empowered. You know, unfortunately, the financial industry doesn't do a good job of educating people. And our education system is pretty lacking on finances. Right. And money is not everything, but it does rank right up there with like oxygen. Right. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of important. <laughs> and if you really want to know and you want to have power, right, if you want to have that power in your life and really start to feel like that relief of knowing I'm in the right place, I'm doing the right things yeah. for my family and myself, then um, you need to be educated. And so we we're willing to take that time. You know, yeah. it's really important is that uh, we got to take time. We got to build relationships, really get to know people, their family, what their experiences have been, right? Yeah. We, you know, what, what kind of uh, uh, stories have been told to them about money their whole life. Yep. And let's talk about those things. And then let's talk about where you want to go because everyone's goals, uh, dreams are, are a little bit different. So yeah. it takes time, uh, education to, to really get that through, but we're, we're willing to do it. We're, yeah. we're investing that time. Well, I mean, you have taken the time today to, uh, to educate all of us a little bit more and we, we really do appreciate Jack. Thank you so much, uh, for, for joining us on the podcast, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I mean, I, it's my pleasure. I come back. This is fun. <laughs> I think we actually did it. I think we, we, we got to explain infinite banking on a podcast. Uh, I learned a lot. I hope, uh, all of our viewers did as well. And again, uh, Jack Waldron, thanks so much for joining us brother. Thanks, Sam. Listen to this interview and more on the Alliance Group podcast.